Oops. Actually, is if you want to turn your sound down a little bit. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another iteration of our BFA Artist Talk series. Um, I'm sitting here with Emma, and we'll introduce Emma here in a moment. Um, but my name is Tammy Landis. I am the museum educator and curator here at the Western Gallery of Western Washington University. And we are currently in the Western Gallery in the Fine Arts Building on campus. So it's great to welcome you all in virtually. Um, and please know that you are able to come visit this exhibition in person which is very exciting. We're um, very pleased to be able to welcome our community back in here physically into the space. Um, and we all know that there's nothing better than actually getting to physically be present with the works in this exhibition. So please look at our website, look at our hours and sign up for an appointment. Come on in, we'd love to have you in um, and to be able to see this exhibition, um, which we've called Material Mind due to the themes that I've seen prevalent in a lot of the works. There's a rich, variances of materials that are communicating concepts and ideas that are often intangible. Um, so we're going to jump right in today uh, and chat with Emma and I just a little housekeeping we will chat for about 20 minutes. Um, and then after about 20 minutes or so, if anyone has any questions, we would love to address them. So your role is the audience today our live audience. Please chime in if you have a question. Uh, there's a little chat box at the bottom of Zoom. Go ahead and type it in, even if it's just a compliment or something, um, even if it seems minute, if you wanna know a little bit more about the process or why that color, especially in Emma's work today. Um, if there's something that stands out you wanna know more about, please utilize this time that we have with Emma and ask a question. Um, and we may not get to it right away, but I'd love to be able to circle back and talk through those at the end. So. Put in those questions, my colleague Chris will read them out to us and we will address those um, at the end. So let's jump right in. We're surrounded by your work, Emma, and the BFA exhibition at the Western Gallery. You did it. Thank you. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> um, I definitely feel a huge sense of relief, yeah. but I also feel proud to see the culmination of all of my work throughout the year kind of up on the wall and to see it kind of amongst all of this incredible art by incredible, talented, brilliant artists. Mm -hmm. um, I just, yeah, I feel very proud and humbled to be a part of this. You should, I mean, it's a lot of work. And I know most of you that are listening you know about the BFA program, but it's a year long program. You've been working on this body of work for a year, but in reality, your whole life, mm -hmm. um, especially because of your work, which we'll get to, does capture a lot of your identity in yourself. So it's kind of a self project, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes down to it, these ideas didn't just come in overnight, you yeah, know, it absolutely. took a lot of time mm -hmm. to get to this. So congratulations again, you Thank know, you. It, it's, it's great to be sitting here with you, um, surrounded by your work uh, finished in the Western <laughs> Gallery. Um, so why don't we why don't we start first and give our audience, you know, a bit of a description. I know that we have some images that'll pop up um, on the screen for you all, um, and you're seeing the work at a distance here, but maybe can you describe, you have two different sides of mm -hmm. your installation here, and I do wanna address the color of the wall because it might not be as clear, um, but why don't you describe what we're looking at here? What's sitting behind us? Yeah, so we're looking at a collection of five mixed media works on paper here behind me, and then over here, a collection of 21 um, smaller works, including two abstract paintings. And the majority of these pieces are just a blend of all different kinds of media, primarily acrylic paint, but spray paint, screen print, collage, drawing, mm -hmm. um, all kinds of stuff kind of happening all together. Um, the images are pretty foundational to the works behind me. Um, but as I kind of progressed throughout the year, I became very focused on painting. Um, but yeah, we're looking at a bunch of mixed media collages, mostly focusing on themes of memory, childhood, nostalgia, and time. Mm, mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Emma. Mm. Um, let's backtrack a little bit. So, you know, the fall, um, you know, you're going to be, or last spring, a year ago, you've gotten accepted, mm -hmm. right, to the BFA year. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be doing a year-long project of who knows what it'll be. Mm -hmm. What work were you creating before your BFA program and what did you anticipate making uh, before you arrived at this body of work? 
Well, frankly, I had no idea. Um, I was hoping to do something that was had an immersive quality, maybe something yeah. with light or something with paint on the wall, which I'm happy that I got to do. Um, but I was definitely doing a lot of kind of mixed media collages like I'm doing now. They were just less developed, like my skills. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was kind of working with similar thing, themes, definitely themes of identity. Um, but I think I honed in a lot more on what I wanted to talk about just from working all year mm -hmm. and um, writing and just doing a lot of thinking. Um, yeah, I was kind of all over the place in terms of what I wanted to talk about. And now I think I have a much more clear direction mm -hmm. um, and a much more sophisticated understanding of, of color and composition and mm -hmm. um, things like that. So mm -hmm. I think overall, I'm, I've actually kind of gone a direction I kind of expected, especially with mm -hmm. this piece over here, okay. um, because I was doing um, some kind of modular installation works at the time. And I'm glad I got to kind of carry that out this year. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I feel like I was making somewhat similar work to what I've created here. It's just a little more sophisticated now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned color, mm -hmm. right? And I think uh, I think even our virtual audience can see color is really significant mm -hmm. for you and your work mm -hmm. and then your lovely outfit too. It's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. Um, but I, I want to, I want to really talk through color mm -hmm. for you because mm -hmm. it's poignant and I know it has an emotive quality for mm -hmm. you. I know it carries, um, aesthetic value, but mm -hmm. so much more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you didn't just come and install your works and that's it. You also decided to paint the walls mm -hmm. this beautiful like lilac. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have a specific name for this color, um, yeah. but tell us about why you painted the wall, you know, yeah. and what, what does that add to this installation for you? Yeah, well, I first had the idea of painting the wall when I installed a few pieces at a restaurant downtown and mm -hmm. they had a red wall. And that was the first time I'd seen my work on a colored wall. And that was very exciting to me to kind of incorporate this backdrop um, into my pieces, but the red was a little intense. Mm. Um, and I was just kind of ruminating on that. And then um, because I'm thinking a lot about uh, childhood and like my childhood home, I thought it would be nice to paint the wall the color of my childhood room, which is kind of this mm. uh, warm lilac sort of orchid color. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly what the color was. So I was yeah. picking the color from memory, <laughs> um, but I think I got it pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, but I really wanted to surround the viewer with kind of all of these references mm. um, to my life and just kind of surround the viewer with color in general. Mm -hmm. um, I think color is the most important thing in the world. And I think a lot like music, it's really a universal language. Um, and I think it's very easy to react to color, which is why I use so much of it. And I, I want people to be able to have a reaction to my work, just like, mm -hmm. you know, any artist, mm -hmm. but I want the reaction to be strongly related to the color palette and whatever, mm -hmm. um, colors the viewer might see that they respond to the most. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I picked this color for those personal reasons of it being the color of my childhood room, but, um, also because lilac and lavender are very, very calming colors. Mm -hmm. um, and if you see my works in person, there's a lot going on. They're a little chaotic. Um, and I thought it would be nice to have a backdrop that could be integrated into mm -hmm. the work itself, but would also kind of serve as sort of a, like be kind of grounding and relaxing mm -hmm. in the same way. So um, yeah, I had a few reasons for picking this color, but yeah. Um, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Mm -hmm. And I definitely, when I look at it, I can, I definitely feel like a sense of nostalgia thinking about my, mm -hmm. my childhood bedroom, which I did pick that color as well mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was like eight or nine. That's amazing. <laughs> um, so I think what stands out to me, and for those of you that are listening to, I don't know if you you gather this, but Emma is keenly aware of perception and the perception of color. Mm -hmm. um, I remember um, even having you in a student in one of my classes, but our early conversations in February and, you know, artists that inspire you are those that are working with light mm -hmm. and how they're manipulating how people perceive color with mm -hmm. kind of an illusionary sense, like Olafar Eliasson and how mm -hmm. people walk into a space and 
perception is completely altered. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's an important aspect of you, you know, to understand, you know, that you're not just looking at two-dimensional artists, like you're really inspired by Mm -hmm. installation artists and Mm -hmm. those that are working in light. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know if there's anything else you'd want to add to that, but I just think it's an important part of your, your development as an artist this year is Mm -hmm. that idea of perception. I think you've really honed in on that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm most comfortable with two-dimensional works, um, most comfortable with paper and painting and drawing and things like that. I've kind of, in collage, I've just kind of always done that, right. but I've always wanted to kind of get into the world of um, more installation work and things that are, sur- that really surround the viewer and kind of create more of an experience. So I think this was kind of a good way to sort of bridge that gap. And I hope in the future, mm-hmm. I can start to look at more kind of like light installation, things like that. But um, for now, this was a very comfortable way for me to start thinking about um, really involving the viewer um, mm-hmm. in the work. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad you mentioned Oliver Eliasson because he's he's probably my favorite artist. Yeah. Um, and he does primarily work with light and color, although he does some really lovely paintings as well. Mm-hmm. He's got a huge body of work, but mm-hmm. um, the his works that have impacted me the most were definitely his light installation pieces, including the one that I wrote about in your class, A Room for One Color, which is yeah. just um, an empty room that's just saturated with this yellow orange light that causes all of the pigment, and, well, not pigment, but you know, all of the color in everything, um, everyone's clothes and skin to get completely washed out. And it just looks like you're in a black and white movie. Mm-hmm. And it's really incredible. And I got to experience it when I was a kid in Chicago. And it was definitely the the first work of art that ever really impacted me. Mm. And it's always stuck with me ever since then. And I've never been able to stop thinking about it. Mm. Um, So I think having that early experience with um, a contemporary work of art like that is definitely what kind of got the ball rolling with my interest in color and um, really involving the viewer in the work, Mm. yeah. It's really significant. Thanks for sharing that. You know, you physically encountered that style of work. So it clearly impacts you. So there you go. We have, you know, an even deeper understanding um, as to why you painted the wall purple, (laughs) just not stylistic. I mean, truly it encompasses a lot of the values that you place on how you want your work to be encountered. And I think that's really key here. Yeah. I'm glad to be able to talk about it because I did really labor over this wall. Yeah. It took it took so much longer to paint <laughs> than it They don't need have. to know that. They know it's effortless, right? I mean, it just no. popped up. No, I want to <laughs> be honest. That <laughs> was a lot of work. Yeah, um, yeah it, it, was, it was a lot of work yeah. um, just, just to paint the wall. And I think, I think that's perfectly okay. Like it, right. it did feel like kind of a labor of love a little bit, mm. um, even though it was, it, it was a pain at times. Um, it, I'm, I'm really glad that I did it. And it yeah. feels like, especially with this installation over here, it really f- it feels almost pretty essential mm-hmm. to the work at this point. It just makes it feel very finished to see yeah, all of my pieces definitely. against this purple. So I'm really happy about that. Good, good. I think it is very successful and it really stands out. Um, I think it holds your work Thank very you. well. Thank you. So let's let's talk about the titles. Mm. Um, I know sometimes titles can be challenging mm. to arrive at, but we don't have to go through all of them. But mm. could you share just a few of them and you know the significance of those titles? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. I also think titles are very important. Um, A lot of people don't title their work and I think that's perfectly fine. But for my work in particular, I think that the meaning comes through a lot better and it's much stronger and easy to relate to if there's a title. Um, So some titles I arrive at very quickly. I just kind of look at the work and I'm like, that's a good title for it. Um, And then some of them take much more time. I wanna think a lot about the phrasing um, and you know, I will do stream of consciousness writings. I'll like meditate on, not actually meditate, but you kind of like ruminate on the pieces um, a lot just to kind of figure out what I want the viewer to think when they're seeing it. And um, so I think those words are very, very important. Mm -hmm. Um, So this one here is one of the first ones I titled. Um, It's called Where You Grew Up. Um, and I specifically titled it that actually kind of inspired by the way Oliver Elias entitles his pieces, Mm. um, where he often includes the word your or you in the title. So it Mm. really involves the viewer Mm. in the work if they're being directly addressed. So I thought, um, 
I thought I would want to title one of my pieces kind of like that to make mm. the viewer feel like they're being addressed. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of why I titled that one that way. Um, and then this piece over here is definitely what I thought about the most with the title, um, because this one really feels like everything I've done all year, mm -hmm. um, all these, this installation of um, 21 pieces. Um, it's called Nebula of Uncertain Reconstructions. Um, so there's like a lot of little bits to that. Um, I'll start with the reconstructions. Mm -hmm. So that has to do with um, a couple of things. Firstly, the way that memory actually works in the brain, the physiological process. It's mm -hmm. believed to be a physical structure that is um, constantly being restructured through the act of remembering. It's not, um, memories aren't locked away in a vault, like kind of how we think right. of them. They're just actually always being physically restructured in the brain. Um, and I thought that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, because of that, memories can be very uncertain, especially ones that we think about a lot, um, which I talk about in my artist statement, the ideal, the idea of um, idealizing and romanticizing yeah. the past. Yep. Um, and I think we idealize moments in time, either um, personal memories or cultural memories, like a, an entire decade. Mm. Um, we kind of idealize things in the past that we think about a lot. And I think part of that is because of the way that memory works physiologically. And I think mm -hmm. that's really interesting. Um, and then the other reason I went with that idea of reconstruction is because a lot of these pieces are um, were once larger pieces, mm -hmm. like the size of um, these ones behind me, mm -hmm. um, that on a larger scale weren't really working for me, but there were a lot of individual passages that I really loved. Mm -hmm. um, so I would decide to kind of cut them down, which is okay. always kind of risky. Yeah, um, and you definitely. end up trashing a lot of the smaller ones, but I would cut them down and find little passages that I was really proud of. And then I felt like would be good compositions on their own mm -hmm. um, and then work on the smaller pieces individually. And then I kind of piece them all together on this wall here, sort of like um, joining them based on the color or making sure that um, certain types of mark making are being repeated mm -hmm. or imagery is being repeated and it's like nice and balanced. Mm -hmm. um, so in a way like the larger pieces are being reconstructed as well mm. so there was definitely a lot of thought that went into yeah. that portion of the title and then um nebula i wanted like a cloud like structure yeah um to the whole important. thing mm -hmm. but cloud's not as pretty of a word <laughs> yeah and i also just i kind of like the sort of cosmic connotation of the word nebula so that's yeah. how i arrived at that title um, but yeah, that title is definitely the one that's the most important. And then all of these are titled as well. Um, and yeah, like I said earlier, yeah. some of them I were easy to arrive at. Mm -hmm. Some of them I had to put some thought into, but at the end of the day, it all mm -hmm. just, it's just, I finished the piece and then I look at it and I'm like, what words fit this? Right. Um, so. Great. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. all of that. I think it's really helpful, especially for those that are watching that are maybe in their undergrad career and like are considering a BFA it's nice to hear artists emerging artists like talk through how you come up with the title because mm -hmm. it can feel very daunting mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. um, and you've put a lot of thought into it so I wanted to give you you know a chance to chat through that um, but I think we have some questions actually already okay. which is good um, so my colleague Chris if you wouldn't mind could you go ahead and read um, the first question I'd love for Emma to be able to respond to that yeah, you bet. Hi. Um, there are there are a couple of questions, a um, little bit chewy, and so just being you know mindful of the, the spot of time that we have left, um, I'll ask the questions and you know try to give enough space for you know each one to answer. And some of them you've touched on a little bit, so if there's a little bit of overlap or repetition, you know you can kind of breeze over those bits. Um, please discuss uh, all aspects of your academic research. Who is writing about contemporary abstraction right now? Are you studying historical abstract expressionism and investigating contemporary reinvention of painting and abstraction? Did you catch some of that? I, I think it's I like got it. if you're mm -hmm. okay, got it. Yeah, I think I got it. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think I definitely studied historical abstraction um, mm -hmm. this year more so than contemporary abstraction um, in writing anyway. Yeah. Um, 
with contemporary abstraction, I was definitely just looking at current artists. Um, yeah. Andrea Sos, who lives in Victoria, mm. is someone that mm. I was really inspired by. Um, uh, but I'm definitely really inspired by historically the writings of Wesley Kandinsky, who, mm. you know, of course, um, wrote a lot about the relationship between um, abstraction, color, and music. And that was really inspiring to me for sure. Mm. Um, I've also read um, a bit about the relationship between um, painting and photography, mm -hmm. um, the essay Shared Intelligence. Um, yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Emma, um, there's so much that artists are making right now in relation to what used to be coined abstract expressionism and how that carries out today. Mm -hmm. I mean, Emma has some parallels, but Emma has also added significant leaps and bounds into your own space and your own work that mm -hmm. I wouldn't define, you know, within those parameters. But um, yeah, interesting question. Um, I'm glad people are making those parallels. Do we have another one, Chris? Yeah. I do. Um, why the BFA at Western? Could you have made this work on your own outside of the context of school? Could I have made this work on my own outside of the context of school? Like, say, why a BFA um, here at Western? And mm -hmm. would you have made this work, you know, if you weren't in the BFA? Um, well, here at Western, um, I mean, I came to Western in the first place because I, I love the area um, for the most part. Um, but the BFA program at Western um, specifically is has a really wonderful environment and there's really great camaraderie. There's no competition whatsoever. There's, it's like the environment is so just, it's not competitive at all. Mm. And I do not thrive in competitive environments. Mm. I really need to be supported by the people around me. And that's definitely what I got with the BFA cohort here. And I mm. think that's what a lot of past BFAs have felt as well. Um, and also, I don't think I would have made, um, I don't think I would have been able to create this work out of mm. the context of school. I think, um, being given direction by my professors and by um, other students in my cohort is super crucial. Mm -hmm. um, critique, especially, is incredibly important mm -hmm. to like you know a, an emerging or growing artist. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think I would have been able to do any of this, or um, would have been able to improve significantly quickly yeah. um, without doing the the BFA program mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, that, as well as just having access to certain facilities, I wouldn't have had access to the screen printing facilities, which I really enjoy screen printing and I've incorporated some screen printing into mm -hmm. my pieces and I wouldn't have been able to do that um, as well um, without being in school probably mm -hmm. because printmaking is not easy to access everywhere. Right. Um, so I definitely don't think I would have reached this point without mm -hmm. um, doing this program and I especially wouldn't have been able to install my work in a gallery this professional at this point in my life sure. um, without doing this program. So I'm really yeah. glad that I did it. Yeah, this is definitely a big part of it, you know, getting to this point, creating the body of work, but then getting to go through the process of installing mm -hmm. gives you a sense of confidence. I can do it again, yeah. right? Now you <laughs> yeah. have an understanding of what mm -hmm. it takes, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big yeah. part of the BFA year. Um, I think we have another question and then we'll probably have to wrap up. We, we have several, so we probably won't make okay. it to all of them. But um, the next one in the queue is um, one you've touched on just briefly, but um, uh, what's your process of building these pieces? Yeah, yeah. Um, my process usually starts by laying down a couple images, usually something that I can get quickly, mm -hmm. um, usually from a magazine or something like that, mm -hmm. that I can just tear out quickly get started, get some ideas down and like a few strokes or like drips of paint just to kind of get things going um, so that I have something that I can react mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. um, images are very easy to react to. So it's- Like a um, photograph, you mean? Yes, a photograph. Mm -hmm. um, they're very easy to react to. Mm -hmm. um, if, you know, the color or the general tone or emotion in the photo, um, that's a great way to get started. So I'll lay that down first and kind of just start painting and then um, little shapes and like pockets and passages will kind of start to develop. And then mm -hmm. I wanna repeat certain things kind of across. So it's really like a process of carving it out for the most part. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, while a lot of the mark making feels yeah. very quick and energetic, it's a very slow process yeah. and it's 
um, labor intensive and mm -hmm. I'm pretty thoughtful about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, my process really involves a lot of layering um, and it all kind of starts from that very first layer. So those first few um, marks and photos that I put down, the first few actions are super crucial to how it turns out in the end. Mm -hmm. Even if in the end, those original photos or um, strokes of paint get totally obliterated, right. the mm -hmm. fact that they were there in the first place um, affects the final product. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I think, I think that answers the question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Lots of layers. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, we're out of time already, Emma. It's crazy. It's easy to <laughs> chat with you. Um, but I think you all have gained a bit more understanding of Emma's work, but I'll tell you, you won't know it fully until you come here and look at it. Um, you need to come see the layers that Emma's describing here. Um, each of these panels, especially the larger ones, you can stand there for a good amount of time and still find something new every rotation of your eye as you move throughout the panel. I mean, uh, Emma has been very clever on distinct mark making that feels emotive with certain, you know, emotions or, you know, you use um, clever perspective use to draw you into these panels that feel abstract, but then all of a sudden there's representation that comes pouring out in different ways. So really successful work, Emma. Congratulations, you. you know, on, you. on this body of work, but also what you've been able to accomplish Thank in you. this year. Um, so please do come into the gallery, make an appointment if you've enjoyed this talk about Emma's work. I promise you'll enjoy encountering the work. Um, if you haven't already, register to hear our next artist talk with Iz. Um, we'll be starting that here momentarily. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for following along and supporting our BFA artists here at the Western Gallery.